welcome to the Pumpkin Picker STEM Challenge video walkthrough. Throughout the video, you'll hear me refer to this as the third challenge in the Thanksgiving series, but you can absolutely do this challenge anytime during the fall. It's really all about creating devices to harvest food. Before we go any further, let's take a second to look at the materials and the STEM Challenge cycle. This is the STEM Challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You can click on the title now to see the cycle explained. So I have a couple options here for you. Uh, my preference is to use the little candy pumpkins whenever you can, but I found that in some areas they sell these all the way through Thanksgiving and in some areas they stop selling them after Halloween. So you might be too late to get these. If you are, a good substitute are Rolos or um, those little wrapped caramels. Well, in this one, I have a guideline underneath the pumpkins so that they'll be set up in perfect arrays. And in this one, it's just a green paper and the students can determine if they even wanna use arrays or what the best pumpkin patch is for their design. There are definitely benefits to both approaches, either using a guideline so students know where to place the pumpkins or allowing them to set it up however they like. If you use a guideline, you're making sure that all of the groups have the same pumpkin patch to start with, and so comparing the designs is legitimate. When students set up their own pumpkin patch, that has benefits as well. One of the benefits is it's basically an extension of the design. Instead of designing a tool for a specific pumpkin patch, they're designing complementary tools and pumpkin patches together at the same time. In order to make it fair, you need to make sure you give the same amount of pumpkins or Rolos or whatever to every group so that the comparisons are fair. If you are going to be looking to extend on this idea of arrays with this challenge, I would recommend using 24 pumpkins or 36 because there are many factors and thus many possible arrays. So what students are going to be doing is they're going to be harvesting the pumpkins and putting them into a harvest container. So you need something the students can put the pumpkins in. These foil tins or little uh, styrofoam or plastic bowls work really well. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. And you do want to think about the container because the larger the container, the easier it is. And the smaller container makes it a little bit more challenging in some ways. And I'll, I'll show you an example in just a second. So I have two designs to test here today. I have one right here, and this is probably the simplest design you ever did see, but it's pretty effective if memory serves. So one of the rules is that the students can't actually physically touch the pumpkins. Oh, I missed one. So as I was saying before, the size of the container does impact how well it harvests. Now this will probably turn upside down a little bit. But if I'm using the bowl, it might be a little bit more challenging. Let's see. I missed one, so that'll be a problem. The way you're going to have students measure results in this one is either by the amount of time it takes to actually entirely harvest the pumpkin patch. So in cases where it doesn't fall into the container, they have to use their tool in order to pick it back up and put it into the harvest container. The other thing you can do is have them record the number of moves it takes them in order to clear the pumpkin patch. the number of moves it takes me to clear the pumpkin patch. Obviously I need to finish, but I have done two moves and I have cleared 10 pumpkins out of 30. So if I continue at that rate, it should take me a total of six moves in order to clear the pumpkin patch. And so that creates sort of another challenge and you can have them actually record both the total amount of time and the total number of moves it takes in order to clear the pumpkin patch. So let's take a look at our other design here. We have a little claw. actually working pretty well. It is only getting two pumpkins at a time, but it is fun. Let's see how the design fares with Rolos. So just a note there, when I opened like that and I grabbed my Rolos, I got this one, but this one I missed and I went to try to pick it up again. I would count that as a second move. So even though I only went to the harvest container once, I would count that as two. You don't need to do that. Just make sure that the students know what counts as a move and what doesn't count as a move if you're having them record that. Again, you can make it a lot simpler by just recording the total amount of time it takes to clear the pumpkin patch. To increase difficulty, you can always increase the size of the pumpkin patch. You can also require that the tool works well with various arrays. And again, having them calculate the number of moves it takes to clear the pumpkin patch in addition to or instead of the amount of time 
also requires an element of strategy on their part, so that also increases difficulty. To extend on this, you can continue your studies of the Plymouth Colony and the New World. Have students create math problems based on their arrays, based on the average number of moves it took for different groups to clear the pumpkin patch. There are many ways to extend this with math. Look up some YouTube videos for the world's biggest pumpkin. It will blow your mind. And of course, the ever popular pumpkin life cycle. You have the basics in order to do this on your own in your class. But as always, if you want more than just the basics, check out the resource. This November, be thankful you don't have to waste your time reinventing the wheel. This resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with 2nd through 8th graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest is already done. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the pumpkin picker materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find promise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions and a guideline to help students set up their pumpkin patches. In the extension handouts, you'll find pumpkin writing, math extension, and process flow templates, as well as task card directions, examples, and templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Thanksgiving and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. Well, all right, we're all done with Pumpkin Picker. Again, it's one of those that looks really simple, but it's deceptive. It can be really tricky. Be sure you like and subscribe and come back next week. We'll be talking about Corn Cultivator. See you next time.